Wandering NPCs are a long-standing part of pretty much anything that has an NPC in it. And so in this video, we're going to set up NPCs who wander between different points, pause randomly, and we'll also get your animation set up. I'm Matt with Nightrun Studio, let's get started. Now first off, you will need a game object with a sprite for your NPC. We'll also add some sort of a collider, I'm adding a box collider 2D, which I'll quickly resize. And then you'll need to add a rigid body. I'm also going to click on constraints and freeze the Z rotation so that he doesn't fall over. With that done, we're ready to get scripting. I'm going to create a new C sharp script and I'll call this one cutscene element underscore NPC wander. We'll be using rigid body movement in this video, so we'll create a serialized private rigid body 2D, which I'll call RB. I'm also going to make a serialized private float for our speed. Now let's actually get him moving. So we'll tell our rigid body that its velocity should be equal to vector 2 dot right. Yes, I know we're only going to go right for now. And we'll multiply that times speed. Don't worry, we'll add directionality in a moment. This brings us to our first checkpoint. So we can actually put this script onto our NPC. I'm going to give a speed of 2. Don't forget to drag in the rigid body. And now we can just make sure that everything's working up to this point. So far so good, but now we want to make it so that he can actually move between specific points. So to do this, we'll make another serialized private float. And we're going to make a left patrol X and right patrol X, and these will just define the boundaries within which our NPC will roam. Now that we've created those boundaries, we can check to see if our NPC is within them. So we'll do if transform.position.x, so the NPC's X value, is greater than right patrol X, or, which is what these two lines mean, his transform position x is less than the left patrol x, in either case he's left his boundary, we then want to flip the NPC. I'm going to create a new void method here, which we'll call flip. And there's a couple of things we'll want to do in this method, but first of all, let's take the rotation part of his transform, and we're just going to make it so that it moves 0 on the x, 180 degrees on the y, and 0 on the z. Here in Unity you can see that my NPC actually has a default Y rotation of 180 already, which is what allows him to face left. And so now what we'll just do is every time we flip, we'll call that rotation, making it either 0 or 180 so that he effectively flips back and forth. I'm just going to get rid of the start method as I always like to try to keep my code looking as clean as possible. And now we actually want to get our player facing the correct direction and moving in that direction. So we'll make a serialized private integer called facing direction. We're going to start this off at negative 1, which will mean facing left. If he were facing right, it would be a positive 1. Now at all times, we just want to make sure that his direction, for his velocity, is always being multiplied by his facing direction. So if he's moving left, it'll be a negative 1, which will effectively make the vector to right actually move left. Now we just need to make sure that we actually change this value whenever we flip. So after we've rotated our player, we're just going to make sure that facing direction is multiplied by a negative 1. If it's positive, it'll now be negative, and if it was negative, it will become positive. This brings us to our next checkpoint, so I'll click on my NPC. I'm just going to look in his transform here, and let's move him to this tree, which is at about 89, and then I want to move him just kind of past this fish, which is around 79. So we can put 79 as our left patrol X, 89 as the right. And at this point, things are working pretty well. He gets to the edge, and he turns around and heads back the other way. Now it's possible that he will do a multiple flip as you saw there, we'll fix that just a little later, but you'll also notice that at the moment he's running into my player, which I don't really want my NPCs to do. Now we can fix this by actually just going to the layer of the NPC as well as the player, and I'm just going to set both of them to the player layer. We can then go edit, project settings, and in our physics 2D there's this collision matrix, but all we want to do here is make sure that our player and player are unchecked so that the player cannot actually collide with other player objects. And now that's working much better. Next up we want to add some pausing here, and so I'm going to create a private bool called is walking, and then down in our update we're just going to make it so that we only give our player velocity if he is walking. Now while that's all in good, we need to actually let him know when he is walking. Now here I want to give you a lot of control over the way this enemy pauses and walks, so we are going to create a few variables. We're going to make a serialized private float for the minimum pause time and max pause time, so that we can select a random number between two values for how long we want him to pause. We'll then do the same thing for his walk time, making a min and max walk time. Now to control all this we're going to need two more variables. I'm going to make a private float for random time which we'll just use to calculate a random number between the min and max pause or walk time depending on our state, and we'll also make a timer, which is going to count whether or not we've reached the end of our time for the state we're currently in. 
Now I'll add back my start method. Sorry, that was short-sighted deleting it. And also I want my player to start off walking, so I'm just gonna set his is walking bool to true. Now at start, we're just gonna calculate the random time by making it a random range somewhere between the minimum walk time and the max walk time. If you want your player to start off paused, you could do the same thing with pause time. Now in update, we wanna make sure that our timer is always counting up based on time.delta time. Now anytime our timer gets to be greater than or equal to the random time, we know that it's time to change states. So for this, we're gonna create a new method called state change. So whenever we're changing our state, we wanna make sure that our is walking variable just changes. We're then gonna set our random time, and here we're gonna use a ternary operator to avoid doing a whole bunch of if statements. So essentially, our random time will be equal to if we are walking, we'll put a question mark, we want it to be a random range between min and max walk time. However, if is walking is false, we want it to choose the second option, which is a random number between min pause and max pause time. At this point, we'll reset our timer back to zero. Now, while clicked on your NPC, you can choose whatever values you want for your pause and walk time. I'm gonna make him pause for somewhere between one and two seconds and walk for three or four seconds at a time. All right, so he is now pausing as he moves and then walking back and forth between the boundaries. We are still getting that flip error and we also need to animate him. So we'll do those things next. Now, the reason for that weird flipping situation is simply down here in update where we check for whether or not he needs to flip. What's happening is he'll move past his right boundary, for example, we'll call flip, but then before he has a chance to move back within the boundary, it will call flip again because it's constantly evaluating this. So to fix that, we can actually just create a flag here I'm gonna make a private bool, which we'll just call is flipping. Now what we wanna do is just make sure that before we try to flip the player that he is not already flipping. So we'll put not is flipping. Now it's important here that the rest of this go into brackets. That way we'll always require him to be not flipping, but if either of the things in brackets is true, we'll be able to flip. Now to make that flip actually do its job, at the top of the flip method, we'll just set is flipping to true so that once it's been called, it can't get called again. Although of course, we'll wanna flip again a little while later. So we need a little bit of a pause here before flipping gets set back to false. Unfortunately, methods can't be paused. However, if we turn this into a coroutine, it can. So we're gonna say start coroutine flip. And here, instead of this being a void method, we'll make it an I enumerator, which is a coroutine. Here we'll put yield return new wait for seconds. You can put in whatever number you like, but I'm gonna make my pause last for about half a second. Then we'll set is flipping back to false. And so now after a short pause, flipping will become false and he'll be able to check again whether or not he needs to flip. There's no new setup necessary, but now we will have gotten rid of that annoying multi-flip that happens when he reaches the corners. Now finally, it's time to add some animation. I'm not gonna get into how to create animations here. There's lots of great videos for that, but we are gonna add an animator. You can look at mine and it's just got two animations, one for an idle state and one for running. I always like to set idle up as the default, and then I'm just gonna make a new parameter, which I'll call is walking. This is essentially going to be a mirror of the is walking bool that we have inside our script. We'll make a transition down to running, and I'll click on that transition. We're gonna make it so that if is walking is true, we change animations. I'm just gonna turn off exit time and transition duration so that this transition happens instantly as soon as our state changes. We'll then make a transition that comes back to idle again click on that. We'll turn off exit time and duration one more time. And then down at the bottom, we just want to make sure that if is walking is false, it goes back there. Now we just have to go into our script to make sure that this is walking matches the one in our script. So first we just need a reference to our animator. I'm going to call mine anim. Then down in here in state change, we want to make sure that our is walking in the animator matches the is walking in this script. So we're going to go anim.setbool. We'll let it know that it is the is walking bool we want to set add a comma, and here we're gonna use another ternary operator. So if this script's is walking is true, we'll go is walking question mark, then we wanna set the one in our animator to true. If not, we'll set it to false. I'm then just gonna copy this line and put a copy of it up in our start method so that at the beginning, he also makes sure his animator matches. Now in Unity, we just need to go to our script one last time, make sure that our animator is dropped in there and we're ready to test. Things should be working well now. My run animation may be a little bit of overkill, uh, but I don't have a walk one yet, so it'll just have to work. Hope you found this one helpful. If you have, please be sure to like or subscribe or just leave me a comment down below. Additionally, if there's anything you'd like to see added to this series, please let me know what you'd like for your cutscenes. Till next time, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.